you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here and today I'm going to be sharing with you all my Asian Heritage Month TBR. Before I get into that though, I do have a few things that I want to say first. First of all, I want to thank you all so very much from the bottom of my heart for all your support on my last video. I was honestly so anxious to post it because I thought that no one would watch it or that it would get a shit ton of backlash but you all have been so so supportive of that video and it is actually now the most liked video on my channel so thank you all so very much for your support on that extremely important topic because it's definitely something we need to discuss and we need to confront in this community. Secondly, Happy Asian Heritage Month! My book club, Book Bound Society, is actually doing Asian Heritage Month as their theme for May. So we're reading all books by Asian authors. We don't have a group book, we're just reading books by Asian authors and we've actually compiled a Google Doc where all of us hosts have shared some of our favorite Asian authors on it to get you all started. And we're also going to be doing some bookstagram challenges, which are of course optional, but I think that they're just a fun way to boost some Asian books and Asian authors and Asian creators in the community so I think that it is just going to be a really fun month so if you're planning on prioritizing Asian reads this month then you could definitely do it with us. I always have links to Bookbound Society in the description of my videos because I love hosting that book club. I do it with some very awesome friends of mine so if you want to participate you can join us because it would be super super fun. Those are both the things that I wanted to chat about before starting this video but now that we got those out of the way let's get into my giant Asian Heritage Month TBR. So I have a TBR of 11 books for this month which is honestly ridiculous. I know some people can read up to 20 books or even more a month. I am not one of those people. I read four to five, maybe six if I'm feeling fancy, books a month. So this is not the norm for me, but I haven't been reading much these past few months. So I am like, 10 books behind on my Goodreads challenge and I need to catch up. That is part of the reason why I made this TBR so very challenging for me. And the other reason is that I also just had a lot of trouble picking between which books I wanted to read, so I just put a ton of them there. This is gonna be an exciting month. First up, I have Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Little Fires Everywhere was actually just recently turned into a TV show on Hulu, I believe. I haven't started watching it yet. I really wanted to read the book first. Little Fires Everywhere is a literary fiction novel that follows Elena Richardson who lives in Shaker Heights, Cleveland, and she is a woman who is always determined to play by the rules. When Mia Warren, an enigmatic artist and single mother, enters this idyllic little bubble of this small town of Shaker Heights with her daughter Pearl, they change up the situation in this community because they have a complete disregard for the status quo. Elena, being suspicious of Mia and her motives, is determined to uncover the secrets of Mia's past, but Elena's obsession leads to some unexpected and devastating costs. The back of the book says, Little Fires Everywhere explores the weight of secrets, the nature of art and identity, the ferocious pull of motherhood, and the danger of believing that following the rules can avert disaster. So this book sounds really fun. I loved Celestine's other book, so I have high hopes for this one too, and I have been hearing just brilliant things about the TV show, so I'm excited to watch that after reading this book. So. This one's on my TBR. The next books I have on my list is the Tiny Pretty Things duology by Danielle Clayton and Sona Chiraipotra. The Tiny Pretty Things duology is a YA contemporary duology that takes place in one of Manhattan's most elite ballet schools. In this ballet school, the pretty polished dancers are hiding some terrible secrets and telling some twisted lies. From what I understand, this duology is about the dangers of the dance world and it explores the cruelty of these girls and how far they're willing to go to secure their spot and I think it sounds absolutely incredible. As someone who grew up a dancer, I am so very excited to read this. 
The back of this book reads, With the competitions growing fiercer with every performance and harmless pranks growing ever darker, it's only a matter of time before one small spark ignites and even the best get burned. So that sounds fun! <laughs> Next up I have Internment by Samira Ahmed. Internment is a YA contemporary novel that follows 17-year-old Leila Amin. She and her family are suddenly whisked away from their home and forced into an internment camp for Muslim Americans. Throughout the course of this novel, with the help of her new friends in the detention center, her boyfriend on the outside, and an unexpected alliance, Layla begins a journey for freedom, leading a revolution against the camp's director and his guards. The inside cover of this book reads, Set in a horrifying near-future United States, internment is a heart-racing and emotional novel that challenges readers to fight the complicit silence that exists in our society today. I am extremely interested in this one. I have been ever since it was announced. I have read Samira Ahmed's debut novel Love, Hate, and Other Filters, which I absolutely loved, and I think that this novel tackles some very important subjects. I am excited to read it for that reason. Next up, I have Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Ng Wen. Love Boat Taipei is a YA contemporary novel that follows Ever Wong, whose parents sent her away for the summer. When she's sent away for the summer, Ever is expecting Xian Tan, a strict educational program in Taiwan, but instead she finds the infamous Love Boat. There, Ever meets her fascinating classmates who are far more interested in nightlife than they are in their curriculum. For the first time ever, Ever discovers what freedom tastes like and it is exhilarating. The inside cover of this book reads, But summer will end and Ever will be back to her parents and the future they've planned for her. Will she let this glimpse of freedom go? Or will Love Boat give her the courage to pursue the future she dreams of and the Ever Wong she wants to be? I am super interested in this novel. It sounds absolutely fascinating, so I'm really, really excited to read it. Next up, I have Of Curses and Kisses by Sandhya Menon. I know, I know, I'm a fake fan who hasn't read this book yet, but I will do so this month because I am so very excited to read it. Of Curses and Kisses is another YA contemporary novel that follows Princess J.R. Rao and his lordship Grey Emerson. This is the first book in the St. Rosetta's Academy series. This first novel is the story of Jaya and Grey. For Jaya, nothing is more important than family. When the Emerson clan steps up their centuries-old feud to target Jaya's little sister, nothing will stop Jaya from getting her revenge. When she finds out she'll be attending the same boarding school as Grey Emerson, she decides to use it to her advantage and she plans to make him fall in love with her and then to break his heart. The inside cover of this book reads, As the stars conspire to keep them apart, Jay and Grey grapple with questions of love, loyalty, and whether it's possible to write your own happy ending. Yeah, I'm super excited to read this one. I love everything Sandhya writes and I know I'm gonna love this one too. Next up I have Down on a Cross by Arvin Amadi. Down on a Cross is a YA contemporary novel that follows Scott Ferdowsi who has a track record of quitting. While his best friends know exactly what they want to do in life, Scott has absolutely no idea. So with college applications looming and his parents pushing him towards a practical career, Scott decides to sneak out to Washington DC in search of a famous psychologist who claims to know the secret to success. But unknowingly, Scott ends up on an adventure when he meets Fiona Buchanan, who is is a ballsy college student and she gives Scott a bicycle that then sends him on a high-speed chase. The inside cover of this book reads, Soon, Scott finds himself sneaking into bars, attempting to pick up girls at the National Zoo, and even giving the crossword thing a try, all while opening his eyes to fundamental truths about who he is and who he wants to be. This book sounds so fun and I am so, so excited to read it. I love Arvin Amadi. I saw him at a panel at Y'all West back in the days when we could leave the house, and I appreciated everything he said so very much, so I am very, very excited to read this one as well. Next up, I have We Are Totally Normal by Rahul Kanakia. We Are Totally Normal is a YA contemporary novel that follows Nandan, who is determined to make his junior year perfect. While the high school social scene is complicated, Nandan is sure he can crack the code. But then one night after a party, Nandan and his friend Dave hook up, which was definitely not part of his plan, especially as Nandan has never been into guys. 
Still, Nandan's willing to give it a shot, even if that means everyone's gonna see him differently. But while Dave settles into their new relationship with ease, Nandan's completely out of his depth. His anxiety continues to grow more about his sexuality, and then he wonders if he can just take it all back. But is breaking up with the person who's gotten him worth more than feeling normal again? The inside cover of this book reads, From Rahul Kanakia comes a raw and deeply felt story about rejecting labels, seeking connection, and finding yourself. I am extremely, extremely excited to read this one. I have been since months before it came out, and now I actually get to. So I'm super hyped. Next up, I have Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Frankly in Love is a YA contemporary novel about Frank Lee. Despite the fact that he was born and raised in Southern California, his parents still expect him to end up with a nice Korean girl. But Frank is finally dating the girl of his dreams, and she just happens to be white. Desperate to be with her without his parents finding out, he finds Joy Song, who is also in a similar situation as him, and together they come up with a plan to keep their parents off their backs, aka fake dating. The inside of this book reads, in this moving novel, debut author David Yoon takes on the question of who am I with a result that is humorous, heartfelt, and ultimately unforgettable. This novel has been hyped up so much, especially around the time that it came out, so I am so very, very excited to read it. Next up, I have You Bring the Distant Near by Mithali Perkins, and this is a multi-generational novel that follows three different generations of an Indian family. The inside cover of this novel reads, As each Das woman decides which Bengali traditions to uphold in America and which to leave behind, Behind, one hard truth remains. Some scars take generations to heal. With sparkling humor and incisive feeling, Mithali Perkins spins a timeless tale of the American dream that will inspire you to bring those who might seem distant or different nearer in your heart. I have been wanting to read this book for ages, and so I'm finally going to! And finally, I have A Girl Like That by Tanaz Bathana. A Girl Like That follows a 16-year-old Zara Nawadia, who is many things, a bright and outspoken student, an orphan, and a risk taker. She's the type of girl that parents warn you to stay away from, where they say you don't want to get involved with a girl like that. So how is it that 18-year-old Porus Dumasia only has eyes for her? And how do Zarin and Porus end up dead together on a highway in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia? As Zarin's story is told, pieced together from multiple perspectives, it becomes far more obvious that she is much more than a girl like that. The inside of this novel reads, This beautifully written debut novel from Tanaz Bathana reveals a rich and wonderful new world to readers. It tackles complicated issues of race, identity, class, and religion, and paints a portrait of teenage ambition, angst, and rebellion and alienation that feels both inventive and universal. I have had this book on my shelf for years, and I really, really have wanted to get to it for so long. And now I finally can! So. Those are all the books that I plan to read in May, and I am overwhelmed just talking about them, so reading them is going to be a challenge. But I am very, very excited to read all of them, so I hope that I love all of them as much as I am anticipating them. And with that, that's all I have for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe because that stuff makes me happy. Go ahead and comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were, or let me know what books by Asian authors you're planning to read this month. As usual, all of my social media and my Goodreads will be in the description below if you'd like to follow me anywhere else. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day or night wherever you are. Please remember that you are beautiful and you deserve the world and I will see you soon for a brand new video. Goodbye!